this video, we'll take a look at a special kind of constraint called the tank that can really affect manufacturing processes in food and beverage, chemical, breweries, and distilleries, for example, where the physical storage of liquids and gases, for example, can really affect the overall flow of product through all of your resources. And so here to illustrate a simple example of a kind of scheduling constraint that affects both material and capacity availability, I've set up a very simple model to illustrate some of those concepts. So starting here with the tank that you can see on the bottom part of the screen, some of the special properties of tanks include a physical capacity. So in this case, this particular tank is set to have a capacity of a thousand units, whether that's gallons or liters or other units of measure, that's your choice about that physical capacity. Another special property of tanks is that, generally speaking, different items cannot be stored in the same tank. And so very clearly here on the Gantt chart, with color codes and labels, you can see that the very first item that I'll store in that tank is called item 1. And then once that flows out of the tank, I'm able to open that tank up and load in a second item or a third item and so forth, depending on the availability of uh, that particular resource. Now, different tanks might have different connections with other resources, different flow rates, and so forth. And I'm just going to illustrate how that would work here with uh, an example that comes up very commonly in manufacturing where uh, a resource might break down. Now, before I do that, just to illustrate some of that flow concepts and connections here, if I click on that item number one, much like other processes you'll see in our APS, you'll see that item one flows right into the pack line here on pack number one. So everything's running great at this point in time. No worries involved with my current schedule. But as we all know, very often different exceptions can come up. And so if that particular pack line happens to break down unexpectedly or I need to plan on scheduling some maintenance there, I can always open up that particular occurrence, mark it as being offline, and maybe put in a particular note to illustrate what's happening so that I can remind myself what the issue was. So as I save that, um, like you may have seen in other videos of our APS, you'll see that the schedule is automatically adjusted. So based on that new restriction or constraint, if that pack line is going to be down, one of the great things about this particular APS is that you'll see that the schedule is automatically adjusted. So the fact that different items can't mix in the same tank is automatically accounted for here on the tank line. Because I'm pushing out and delaying slightly my packaging run, you can see here that based on the flow rate, I'm going to have to store tank item number one there for a little bit longer until I am able to consume it down and then tank item number two can come into play. So that's a constraint that's automatically considered. It's a specialized type of a tank constraint that is obeyed not only when exceptions arise, where resources become available, but of course if I were to go ahead and re-optimize around this, I might have different alternatives that could help resolve this particular exception. So just to kind of illustrate that particular case on the packaging run here, I do actually have different alternatives. As I click on that, just visually speaking, part of the rules that I have set up in my model shows that pack line one and pack line two are both eligible based on that green arrow to handle that particular run. So I could drag and drop that packaging run anywhere I wanted to, but it makes more sense in most cases to really automate that process, consider my rules and constraints across all of my resources and items, and so I'm just going to go ahead and click optimize based on my settings and rules that I have set up. When I do that in a matter of a second or so, you'll see that the entire schedule is readjusted, uh, so we're making great use of not only our downstream resources, but the upstream constraints in tanks are considered as well. So I've used a very simple example here with just a few resources. Very often we see a lot of complex uh, tanks with different sizes, different eligibility of what kinds of products can be stored in and out of those tanks, different flow rates and so on. So I wanted to use this as a brief introduction to the capabilities of our APS and would like to invite you to visit our website, give us a call so that we might be able to speak with you about your particular concerns and situations that you run into on a very frequent basis.